This video has been sponsored by a collaboration of Razer, Thunderbolt, and Intel Technology, and AMD. Today we're going to take a look at the Razer Blade 4 and the Razer Blade Stealth. Now the Razer Blade Stealth is a 13 inch premium ultrabook aluminum construction. It's 0.52 inch thick, it's CNC machined. Uh, it's available with a QHD display or a 4K display between six and eight hours of battery life, depending on which display that you get. A Core i7 processor, Thunderbolt 3, killer wireless AC, uh, 512 gig SSD up to. You've also got a full RGB controller, individually lit keys on the keyboard, as well as you know all the other Razer accessories. Now the Thunderbolt interface is what I want to call particular attention to. This notebook first showed up at CES 2016, and that's where we first took a look at it, or we first saw it. Well, the software has been improved and gone through a bunch of tweaks, and this laptop is able to interface with a desktop graphics card through Thunderbolt. Now Thunderbolt, if you're not familiar, Thunderbolt 3 is a 40 gigabit up to PCI Express type interface in a USB-C connector. Now USB-C is this sort of all-in-one connector. Finally, we're getting to a point where uh, the connectors will carry a whole bunch of other different kinds of signals and the cable won't be completely obtrusive. You know, having a desktop graphics adapter for a laptop it's not really any kind of super new technology, but doing it through Thunderbolt and having it be a good experience in terms of like plug and play and how it's connected and all that is relatively new. We've had the technology, but it's taken a lot of software updates and a lot of innovation um, from the hardware side of things as well as from the software side of things in order to really bring that to fruition. And so finally, with a 40 gigabit interface, which is Thunderbolt 3, we're able to get a PCI Express by four external graphics card. And so we're going to take a look at this setup. This is a, an ultra wide, this is a micro board 3440 by 1440 resolution ultra wide display. And we're going to take a look at this setup. This setup is a no compromises gaming setup, but with an ultra book form factor. And that's because the graphics card is in the Razer core. The Razer core is an external box that you install your GPU in. And we're gonna take a look at how to actually install a GPU. So if you pick this up, you pick up a GPU that you wanna use, you'll know how to install it in the Razer Core. And then of course, the monitor in this case is plugged into the Razer Core. Now you can still use the built-in display, meaning that you can play your game and it'll render on the graphics card in the core in the external dock, basically. It'll send the image back along the Thunderbolt cable to the built-in display on the laptop, which is really cool. But for best performance, you're going to want to run your display off of the graphics card in the dock. Now, you guys know me. I love multiple, multiple, multiple monitors. And this is also really great for me because I can run, you know, workstation class graphics in the dock and have multiple 4K monitors or whatever physically attached to the Razer Core. And so I can get the full desktop experience, but on a super, super tiny Ultrabook. Now, Razer also has other models. If the 13 inch is not large enough for you, Razer has other laptops that are larger and still have the Thunderbolt 3 connection. But this is the first setup. This is the first pairing that was fully certified. And we're going to take a look at this with a couple of different AMD graphics cards because AMD has the X Connect system and the AMD cards run pretty well over the X4 PCI Express connection. But first, let's take a look at the Razer Blade Stealth Ultrabook. Let's do a quick rundown of the full specs on this laptop. It's an Intel Core i7-6500U dual-core processor with hyper-threading. It's 2.5 gigahertz base, 3.1 gigahertz turbo. The built-in graphics is an Intel HD Graphics 520. It has eight gigabytes of dual-channel memory. Comes with Windows 10 64-bit out of the box. Killer wireless AC 802.11 ABGN AC and low energy Bluetooth 4.1. It also has a two megapixel built-in front-facing webcam just above the display, and the HDMI output is a 1.4B output. It has built-in stereo speakers at the side of the keyboard, and it has an array microphone. It's Dolby Digital Plus Home Theater and a 7.1 codec via the HDMI connector. The bundled AC adapter that comes with this is a 45 watt charger. Now in terms of battery life, they advertise up to six hours for the 4K model and up to eight hours for the QHD model. I myself in moderate usage with middle of the road power settings and middle of the road brightness settings was able to get about four and a half, five hours on the QHD model that I took a look at. This is equipped with eight gigabytes of RAM, the i7 and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Now the first thing that struck me is that this machine is a relatively powerful machine for as portable as it is. It's actually thinner and lighter than the 13 inch MacBook Air and the Dell XPS 13 uh, coming in at just under 2.75 pounds and 0.52 inches thick. 
but it's a powerhouse because of the Thunderbolt connection in the external. Now the USB Type-C port on this particular laptop, because it integrates Thunderbolt and because of all the other features, you can run DisplayPort, you can run Thunderbolt, you can run USB, you can run the charging. So when you charge your laptop, this is up to a 100 watt port. So a charger can dump 100 watts through that tiny USB-C connector. And actually, if you're using the core, all you have to do is plug in the one Thunderbolt connection, that's it, and that one cable charges the laptop, carries the PCI Express connection, the USB connections, are uh, on the core docking station, pretty much everything. Now, a quick mention about the RGB. Uh, love it or hate it, this thing is fully loaded with RGB. RGB everything. RGB keyboard, RGB lighting accents for on the core, RGB lighting on the mouse pad if you want it, and the mouse and the headset. Everything is programmable through the Razer software. You can also switch between RGB profiles. So if you want to set up some custom profiles and have some custom lighting effects and control the brightness and that kind of thing, you can definitely do that. If you want maximal power saving, you can disable the RGB altogether. Now, in addition to the Thunderbolt, which can carry, you know, DisplayPort, USB, all the stuff that I mentioned before, there are also two full-size USB 3 ports, one on each side, an audio combo port, so you can do headphones out, microphone in through the one 3.5 millimeter jack, and then there's a standard HDMI out on the opposite side of the laptop. So in terms of port coverage, I think that's a pretty reasonable setup for a laptop like this because you get the two full-size USB ports and display out for whatever you might need. Now you can use, you know, an HDMI out or a mini display port out or VGA out or something like that with a USB Type-C adapter. So you've also got that option as well. Now the display here is a touch display. It's 12.5 inches diagonally and it's available in the two resolutions that I mentioned before. That's 234 pixels per inch for the QHD or 352 pixels per inch for the 4K display. While both of these are IGZO displays, only the 4K display is the full Adobe RGB color gamut. The QHD display is 70% of the Adobe RGB color gamut. Now while the built-in graphics on this is the Intel 520, which is okay for desktop games like Dota, shooters, things like that, if you want to run 1080p at 60 frames per second, you're going to need an external graphics card. And that's where the Razer Core comes in. So now that we've got our full gaming setup running Doom at 35 FPS on this lovely 3440 by 1440 display, how do we get there? Well, you need to install a graphics card. And that's not really that hard. There's a handle at the back of the core that you just basically flip out and then you just sort of lift up and pull. And then the whole thing slides out and you've got your one PCI Express slot that you can put your graphics card in. Simply unpack your graphics card and insert it into the PCI Express slot. You'll have to unscrew the thumb screw for the expansion slot cover and then use the same thumb screw to secure the card. Now, if you need to remove the card, there's a little white release latch that you see here that's recessed. And so if you wanna pull the card out, you'll have to take the thumb screw out and then press and hold that button as you pull up on the card to release it. Almost all graphics cards require external power too. That's why the core provides two four pin power connectors for whatever you might wanna run. So for our top end testing, we ran the Asus R9 Fury in this, which just barely fit owing to the curved heat pipe at the top of the uh, graphics card. But it did fit, and once we got it in there, everything worked perfectly. There are four USB 3 ports on the back of the Razer core, in addition to wired ethernet, and then your Thunderbolt input and your power input. Now the core does charge the laptop, so keep that in mind. Well, that's been a quick look at the Razer Blade Stealth laptop and the Razer Core. This, I think, is where the future is going. I think that for people in college, you know, if you're back to school or if you have a limited amount of space in your apartment or, or whatever like that, this is a really good setup. It gives you some pretty good expandability, you know, basically no compromises graphics. It is true that the Thunderbolt interface at by 4 uh, will be bottlenecked a little bit, especially with high-end graphics. But if you want to run 60 FPS at 1080p, you know, we were able to do that with Grand Theft Auto V. We were able to do that with a number of other titles, basically no problem. I was even able to get 35 to 40 frames per second on Doom 3, depending on the options. That was on medium, medium high, uh, using Vulkan and running on this 3440 by 1440 display. This is a really solid setup for an Ultrabook. It's actually kind of mind-blowing that this is an option for, for an Ultrabook. I've messed around with you know, Thunderbolt 2 interfaces, and I've messed around with proprietary dock graphics card interfaces. And this experience was much better, owing to the AMD uh, ConnectX technology, which is kind of sort of a PCI Express plug-and-play, because PCI Express originally was not meant to be a plug-and-play technology. Now, Macintosh has had Thunderbolt forever, and it is plug-and-play over there, 
but it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison looking at Thunderbolt on PC and Thunderbolt on a Macintosh. But with the Intel Alpine Ridge controller that's built into the laptop, uh, the PCI Express interface here is a little bit plug and play. There is a bundled utility that is provided by AMD so that if you need to undock your laptop, you, you need to right click an icon in the tray and it will show you all of the applications using your external GPU. Otherwise, it will forcefully terminate any applications you had open when you surprise remove the GPU. Just something to keep in mind. But I think this form factor really is the future. I think that portable computing, tablet computing is sort of where everybody wants to go, or at least the mass market consumer. And so for enthusiasts like us, what do we do? Well, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5 down the road, this type of cable shows that we're able to push the massive amounts of bandwidth that we need in a standardized, easy to use connector. We don't need you know, huge bulky bus connectors anymore. This is a great example of the type of technology in that regard that's gonna push us into the future. This is really a good setup for a college student or anybody that's limited on space or anybody that just wants a really powerful Ultrabook with no compromises desktop gaming. And big thanks to Razer for providing this setup and giving us the opportunity to take a look at, you know, desktop graphics in an Ultrabook form factor through Thunderbolt 3. If you guys have any questions or you picked up one of these and want to share your experiences with the forum, please do so at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.